What's up, guys? How are you? Welcome into a Thursday morning episode of the Daily Juice Podcast. My name is Matt Peralt. You guys can follow me across all socials at Sports Talk Matt. One and two light last night. One and two. Down 1.1 units. Unfortunately, we get the college basketball bet wrong. We've been going one and one on these NBA unders. So we're going to pause that and only have one bet in the NBA unders officially here for today. Give me that here in just one second. But we got the uh, one of the unders right, one of the unders wrong for the NBA last night, but Minnesota kind of blew the night, so it stinks. So two, uh, one and, two and one, two and one, one and two. So still a winning week going, but we head towards a Thursday with a lot to get into. Welcome to tournament week, the first of two weekends of conference tournaments around the country, including my favorite, the Missouri Valley Conference. Arch madness, as they call it. It starts. I'm going to give you two plays officially, but I'm going to give you bets on every game. I love this conference. I spent a ton of time covering this conference, going to Arch Madness, being a part of this. I have a deep love for the Missouri Valley Conference, and I think it's one of the best, most underrated, underappreciated events of the year, every year. So if you were an OG, you knew what this podcast was going to be today. I know people are asking me to bet golf. You're like, hey, bet the Bay Hill Invitational, the Arnold Palmer. Like, bet it. Come on. Eh, college basketball, guys. Sorry. I'll bet golf at some point, but not right now. We're going to bet. And I know golf betting's been pretty profitable. Maybe I'll bet a head-to-head over the weekend, Saturday or Sunday. Give us something to watch. But, man, the West Coast Conference Tournament starts in Vegas tonight. I mean, there are so many good conferences around the country. The Atlantic 10. I mean, it's awesome. This is a ton of fun right now. And the next week, we get all the big boys, including the Mountain West Conference Tournament here in Vegas, Pac-12 Conference Tournament here in Vegas. It's incredible. One of the greatest unknown little secrets is how good Vegas is for the conference tournaments this week and next week. You can come in on Saturday, and you can see the big sky. You can see the big west. You can see the West Coast Conference. You can see so many. I mean, it's Look, there's great weeks to be in Vegas, but that Saturday to Sunday, that eight-day stretch, if you're a college basketball junkie, forget the NCAA tournament. The conference championship games are wild. These teams know each other. Different story. It's not really you know, an unknown conference v. conference. This is interconference brawls. Watch. If you've not, if never seen Grand Canyon play, watch what they bring to Vegas. Last year, it was unbleeping believable. The atmosphere. I cannot wait to go back to that conference tournament to go to the WAC, the Western Athletic Conference, to watch that championship run for George, uh, for uh, Grand Canyon. It's going to be unbelievable. <laughs> I cannot wait to get them back here to Vegas. Anyways, this podcast is being brought to you by OmahaStakes.com slash juice. That's a URL you're going to use to go get a subscription. If you go and get a subscription at OmahaStakes.com slash juice, it's free burgers for life for you, plus 10% off everything you buy. A 100% money back guarantee as well with everything you're going to love at omahasteaks.com slash juice. Also, we're into conference tournament time. If you need a book, I got a book for you. Bet365 and Betting Pros. We've teamed up. $5 bet. You deposit $10. You make a $5 wager. If it cashes, you get $150 in bonus bets from Bet365. To get there, go to bettingpros.com slash 365 and sign up, deposit $10, make a bet of $5 or more when that bet cashes, because you're going to hit, obviously, right? When that bet cashes, you get $150 in bonus bets from Bet365. Go to bettingpros.com slash 365. That's bettingpros.com slash 365. Don't forget to deposit $10 of real money in there. Make a bet. Hit the bet, and then you will wind up winning $150 in bonus bets from Bet365. Okay, let's get into the, the NBA play first, and then I'll break down Arch Madness for you guys. Okay, the first play, the only play in the NBA, the Brooklyn Nets. You guys know where we're going with this. We're going to play the under. It's 216 and a half. It's coming down. We're going to bet it overnight. Hopefully, the number doesn't crater like it's done before in the past. The interesting thing about the numbers involving Detroit and even same thing with Brooklyn, the books are starting to put the numbers so low that the last game against Miami went over, went over 
for Detroit, which was stunning because that stopped a one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine straight run to the under. What are we doing? Under with Detroit. Why? Well, at home, they're 16, 12, and one to the under. Brooklyn on the road is 17, 10, and one to the under. Yes, I know. Last two games have gone over for Brooklyn, but this again is because the numbers are coming down so much. And this is the first game of a road trip after a four game homestand, which three of the four games for Brooklyn went over the closing number, over not the numbers we bet, but on the road. Orlando under, Memphis under, Minnesota under, Toronto under, Boston under. Every game on that last road trip, a five-gamer all went under for the Brooklyn Nets. The last time a game on the road went over was the 3rd of February. It was a 231 number, went over by 26 points as they scored 136 points on the Philadelphia 76ers. But before that, you got to go back to the 21st of January to find an over on the road for the Brooklyn Nets. Under 216 and a half for 1.1 units with Detroit hosting Brooklyn. Okay, to Arch Madness. The first two games are not officially played. Okay, but I'm going to give you bets on it in case you want it. These, the first bet I make every year, you know, some people walk into Vegas and they walk up to a blackjack table or they go into Vegas and they walk up to a roulette table and they go and make a play like first hand 50 bucks. Let's go. It's going to set the tone for the whole weekend or come in and bet a hundred dollars on black or come in and play your lucky number and see if it hits right. Everyone's got their Vegas tradition, how to start off a Vegas party weekend. For me, it's betting the under in the first game of Arch Madness every year. Why? Look, Nobody wants to play on Thursday, and no one wants to play at noon on Thursday. Why? No one's there. I mean, we're talking crickets. We're talking dead upon dead atmospheres. This number between Missouri State and Murray State opened up at 141.5. It's currently 140 at the Superbook. We are going to bet the under. Under in the first game. Missouri State taking on Murray State. The numbers don't matter, okay? Just It's the first time these kids have stepped on the floor. These rims are unknown. The sight lines are unknown. The atmosphere feels like a practice. It's not really all that fun, but one team has their season end. End. It's like you're barely awake. You walk up, you're like, what are we doing playing here? This is awful. It's noon Central Time, 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Why are we playing basketball right now? And no one cares. Number opened up at two for Missouri State. It's been bet up at Caesars to two and a half. So money's coming in on Murray State. All four, te- all four of these games are with bad basketball teams. Okay, I'm just saying right now, it's bad basketball teams. But I'm going to go ahead and take the under unofficially. 140, if you want it, okay? Under 140, Missouri State and Missouri State. Second game. There's two sessions, by the way. First session, two games. Second session, two games. The break matters. At Arch Madness, this late session matters. Valpo taking on Belmont. The number is 14 at the Superbook. 14. Look, this is a tournament game. The season's going to end here. I know Valpo hasn't been good, but I I can't help myself here. You're going to give me 14 points in a tournament game? I got to roll with it. I don't love it. I'm not in love with the fact I'm taking a dog that has been absolutely horrific. Valpo has lost, and they've been killed this year. I mean, Valpo has just completely fallen apart over the last, I don't know, month of the season. They have lost, let's see, Valpo has lost. They got a win against Illinois State on senior day, (laughs) amazingly enough. But they lost 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 games before that win. Okay, they're three and 17, three and 17 Valpo's horrific. This, according to Kempom, though, is an 11 point win for Belmont. Belmont ended the year with three straight wins in winning seven of eight. Okay, Belmont should go ahead and house Valpo. They're going to win. But 14 points again, unofficially, but this is I've seen this too many times. Uh, for yes, I've seen teams be run out of the gym. Okay. But I've also seen teams fight hard 
maybe Valpo first half. If you don't want Valpo for the game, Valpo in the first half to keep the game somewhat close. Maybe get like a plus seven or a plus eight. 14. I like the dog there. Okay. Give me 14 points. Just too darn heavy. Everything screams. Go ahead and take the favorite there, but I'm not laying 14 points. End of the game. Cause teams stretch out these games. It's the end of the year. They fight. They play everybody. They foul all the time. They try to keep the game close all the time. Because their year is over. They're not going to it. Not going anywhere after this. This is their last game of the year. Give me the dog. Valpo plus 14. Okay. So what am I betting for real? Okay. That's just the first two plays. This is the second session. Illinois State is laying three. DraftKings has this at three. Against Evansville. So let's break this game down. Okay. Evansville, Illinois State. You might get a two and a half. Okay. This number might come down. You may get two and a half. I got three. You might get two and a half, which would be even better. Illinois State, later game than the other ones. Not a late game per se, but it's an afternoon game, okay? This is a game that we played at 7 o'clock Eastern time, 4 o'clock Pacific. So 6 p.m. time, Central time in St. Louis. Look, Illinois State's not that far from St. Louis, okay? It's not that far. Peoria, right? Peoria, Illinois? You can drive it pretty easily. Actually, you know what? Let me look this up. Let's let's see how far, how far Peoria, Illinois is from... Uh, from St. Louis. I'm going to say it's a two-hour drive. It may not even be that. It, it may be even less than that. It may, it may be way closer than that. Yeah, I mean, that's not even... Let's see, scrolling down to get to St. Louis. It's close. Springfield's closer, but Peoria is not far, okay? There's a lot of people that are going to be able to drive down and be a part of this. It's a day trip. It's not even that far. It's a day trip to just go ahead and, and, and do a little hop, skip, and a jump down from Peoria to St. Louis. And a lot of people do it every year. They drive down because they know, look, our team might only play one game, but they might play a bunch, okay? So, yeah, two hours and 34 minutes. How I drive, it's 170 miles, okay? It's nothing to get there, to get down there. That is not hard at all to get down for Illinois State. And I, I look, the Redbirds have a very, very proud, proud program. There's a lot of, oh, actually, well, Illinois State's in normal. Okay, sorry, I was wrong. Peoria is, who's in Peoria? That's Southern Illinois who's in Peoria? Um, but it's still not far. Hold on, I'll, I'll, do, I'll do it right now. I'll tell you, we're from, from normal, Illinois. we'll do normal Illinois. How far is normal Illinois, St. Louis? I'm gonna say it's about the same distance. Uh, let's see. It's closer. It's actually only two hours. It, it's almost the same distance, basically. It's two hours. It's actually the same distance. It's 169 miles. <laughs> so it's the same exact distance to get to St. Louis, okay? So they're going to have fans. Long story short, they're going to have fans. Their fans are going to be in the building. They're laying three. Now, this year, when these two teams played, okay, against Evansville in the first matchup on the road, they lost by four. They were laying two points. They were favorites. They lost by four. Then when Evansville went to Illinois State, they won by seven. Laying three and a half, they won by seven. Here's the problem. Evansville lost one, two, three, four, five, six, seven games to end the year. They lost by 17, 18, 12, 9, 7, 3, and 3. Their last win came on the 7th of February. That's a basketball team that doesn't want to play anymore. Okay, that's a basketball team that just is playing out the string here. And you could say maybe they get to St. Louis and they they rally. Evansville first half, maybe. But I think the Redbirds, who haven't been great, 10-10 and 10 ATS in the Missouri Valley this year, actually under 500 overall, 14-16, and 16, didn't cover the last two games against Valpo and Missouri State. They lost by three against DeValpo on their senior day, and they beat Missouri State by one, laying four and a half. But they covered at Bradley. They're big dogs, and they covered. They lost, but they covered. They beat Northern Iowa straight up, and then they beat Evansville by seven, laying three and a half points. I just think one team is going in a maybe not an upward direction, but Illinois State's got more to play for. They got a dream to keep on rolling here. Better roster, better team. I'm laying the three. Illinois State, minus three for 1.1 units. And the last game of the night is Illinois-Chicago up against Southern Illinois. The Salukis always bring people. And when you put them in the late slot, mm, they're 11-9 and 
straight up in the Missouri Valley Conference. They're 19 and 12, and Brian Mullins is the head coach of the Salukis. Okay. Brian Mullins was a basketball player for the Salukis when I was covering the Valley. How do you know that you're getting old? Well, when you start to see guys who are becoming head coaches of teams, uh, when you covered them. <laughs> now, he's young, but it's still kind of striking to go, wow, this is nuts to see him as the head coach of Southern Illinois. But 19-12, and 11-9 in the Missouri Valley Conference. The Salukis have won 11 MVC games in back-to-back years for the first time since Brian Mullins was a player. <laughs> since Brian Mullins played at Southern, that's the last time they've had back-to-back 11-win seasons. So things are going in the right direction here. They are really good at stopping the three. They're 19th in the country, holding their opponent to about 30% shooting from behind the arc. They take care of the basketball. They're third in the Valley in assistant turnover ratio, and they're shooting 76.5% from the free throw line, which is second best in the Valley and 30th nationally. They hit their free throws, which is big in tournament games when you're trying to cover numbers. SIU is minus five in this one. Now, 10 of SIU's games have been decided by six points or less. Okay, so we don't really love that, but we'll take six. <laughs> don't want four, five, you know, three, four, two, one. We want, or five is okay, we push, but six is what we want, okay? Southern Illinois is a team that I think, I don't think they'll make a run, but I definitely think they could be a problem in this tournament. At least they can get out of the opening night and and to not make a deep run in, in, in Arch Madness, but definitely have people's attention. Look, they've won big games. They've beaten teams, big teams in the in the in the valley that you might go, hmm, really? The number is five. It really hasn't moved all that much. Illinois Chicago is a team that look, they're five and eleven straight up away from home. Five and eleven. 13 and 5 at home for Southern. They're not at home, but there's going to be a lot of fans there. Not their home gym, not their home rims. But the crowd advantage will be for the Salukis. They will have people in the building 100%, which will help. At home, they were 10 and 7 ATS, but Southern on the road was 8, 4, and 1. They were good on the road. Not bad for UIC. They were 8, 7, and 1, but they were 2, 2, and 1 down the stretch. 6, 13, and 1 in the Valley for UIC. That's not good. 10 and 10 for Southern. Not great, but good enough. Against Illinois Chicago, on the road, they beat them, laid it, laid two and a half. They won by three. At home against Illinois Chicago, they laid five and a half. They won by 12. Is it hard to beat a team three times in one season? Sure. But UIC has lost three games in a row, and they've lost five of six going into Arch Madness. I'm going to lay it with the Salukis here. I like the dogs. Not in the game, or in the game, not in the number. Minus five. I like the favorite. SIU, minus five for 1.1 units. Okay? So not to confuse you, here are the three official plays. Under 216.5 in Brooklyn. Illinois State, minus three. Southern Illinois, minus five in Arch Madness. First game under 140 with Murray State and Missouri State. And I'll take Valpo plus 14 in their game coming up here today against Belmont. But the first two games are not official. Those are just plays I'm making personally. You can fade or follow those picks if you would like. But that's just one of the things I always do. Under in the first game at Arch Madness. It, it's hit more often than it's not, but it's not been like a consistent thing. It's not like every year the under hits, but it's a bet I've made for, I don't know how many years in a row I've made this bet now, probably 10. I made the bet in a row for the under in the first game of Arch Madness. All right, let's go. I'll bet a lot of games involving the Missouri Valley this week. Button up and get ready for some Arch Madness. It's going to be a ton of fun. Four games today. I don't know if all four games are on TV, by the way. Back in the day, the first two games were not on TV. <laughs> Hopefully that changed. But yeah, tomorrow we get going with Indiana State and we get going with Drake and we get Joe, we're going Northern Iowa. We got a lot of games to bet, a lot of teams to play coming up tomorrow here for Arch Madness. My name is Matt Peralt. Follow me across all socials at Sports Talk Matt every morning. Daily Juice Podcast always being brought to you by OmahStakes.com.